The Galaxy S24 Ultra versus the Google Pixel 8 Pro, and it was a lot closer than I thought. And that's really no fault of the S24 Ultra. That's more a credit to Google for all the improvements that they've made with the Pixel lineup, and specifically the 8 Pro. Just a really fantastic, phenomenal device. If I have a problem with Google on the Pixel 8 Pro, it's with the pricing, kind of the gaming back and forth that they do. You could have gotten this for around eight, 900 bucks for uh, several opportunities over the holidays, beginning of the year. Now they want over 1000 again, where I think is, while I, I think it's worth it this year, I'm not going to sit here and jump up and down like in previous years and say this isn't a $1,000 phone. It absolutely is. They give you a lot for the money. I'm just saying that given how Google goes back and forth with sales, you should do yourself a favor and wait for this to be in the eight $900 range. And with the S24 Ultra, $1,300 is way over the mark. So you're going to want to get a good trade-in deal or something like that in order to buy this device. Now, a lot of surprising things about these two devices, like I said, mostly on the Pixel 8 Pro side, where we're talking about the comparison. Let's talk about the build. you got the titanium on the S24 Ultra. That's new this year. You're still getting the aluminum. It's still a premium finish. All the rest of it, you're going to need the Gorilla Glass Victus. you got Gorilla Glass Armor over here. To me, they don't make that much of a difference. They focus now more on shatter resistance than they do scratch resistance, which has annoyed me for a while now. But you're getting pretty much the same on both of these. I don't think you're going to find an issue. If there is a fault with the build quality on the Pixel 8 Pro, it is the camera visor or the aluminum or whatever they use on the camera visor. Dings up, you breathe on it, and it's going to show scratching and marking. But if you if you had it really hand on heart, if you had to tell me to choose between the two, I really like the refinements that they made with the Pixel 8 Pro. I like how it has a flat display, but kind of the curved glass in the back, a nice feel in the hand, excellent, whereas the S24 Ultra could feel a little bit bigger. And even though it is curved, the titanium is curved a little bit, you're going to get kind of that sharp note feel. But if that's what you're used to, then you're going to love it on the S24 Ultra. We talked about the price. Between the two display, let me tell you something. This is something that I did not think I would ever utter. This is a statement that I never thought I would get to the point where I think I prefer the display on the Pixel 8 Pro over the display on the S24 Ultra. And this is after the update. So they've done it. This is more saturated. It's more vibrant now. It is more like the other display. But I think that even though the nits are comparable, I think that the Pixel 8 Pro display is a touch better than the S24 Ultra display. And that is, my friends, if you were to ask me that two years ago, if you were to, if you would time travel to come back and say that I was going to recommend a Pixel display over a Samsung display, I would have said they were nuts. I would have said they were nuts. Would not have believed you for anything. But I think that's where I land on these two devices. Really nice displays on both. But I think Google has taken care of that criticism with the super actual display by giving people a really quality experience and turning a weakness of the Pixel devices for years into a strength. Performance is going to go the S24 Ultra. Performance has been excellent on the Pixel 8 Pro. I'm not complaining about performance on the Pixel 8 Pro. Both do a phenomenal job on 90% of the stuff you're going to want to do. However... If you are a gamer, you're going to want the S24 Ultra. You're going to get more horsepower out of it. You're going to get more frames. There's going to be more to like here with the S24 Ultra as opposed to the Pixel 8 Pro. A little bit of overheating here when you're talking gaming. A little bit of slowdown, a little bit of throttling that you don't get over here with the S24 Ultra. So if you're a gamer, no-brainer over here. Now, I'm not too worried about the on-device stuff, the, the kind of intensive stuff. I'm not worried about the uh, photo processing and stuff like that because a lot of that, I think, as time goes on, is going to be handled in the cloud. And you see that with a lot of the AI functionality. There's some stuff on device, but a lot of it is handled a server side. But either way, for the AI stuff, you've got AI enhancements and kind of optimizations that both these chipsets have made over the last year. You've got the Tensor 3 over here, and then you have the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 on the S24 Ultra side. So that's something. Software support. Really excellent on both. You're going to get seven years of software support for both of these. Now, they both have their drawbacks with that. They stopped the uh, features on the S23 Ultra, so you're going to get the AI stuff on the S23 Ultra, but not on the S22 Ultra, which, okay, seven years of software support, but if you're only doing the latest and greatest stuff uh, a year or two back, that's kind of a deterrent. Same thing over here. So while Samsung might start charging for certain things or whatever else they're going to be doing, I don't know, but... Over here on the Pixel 8 Pro, well, the Pixel 7 Pro, the Pixel Fold 
a $1,500, $1,600 device from over the summer is not getting a lot of the stuff yet. So it uh, kind of question mark. So yes, software support, new versions of Android, all the rest of it. But will we be getting the latest and greatest AI enhancements as well? That's a question mark. But it's good to see uh, software support being a factor and kind of an advertising point for both of these devices. Battery life, phenomenal on both. Tick better on the S24 Ultra? I believe so, about a half an hour. But you're both getting, especially if you're careful, you're both getting about eight hours of screen on time, which if you can get that a typical work day, whatever else, if you're doing that, well, you can get a little top off going. The charging speeds on both are not phenomenal. Better over here on the S24 Ultra, but still 45 watts. When we see 80 watts, 100 watts out of the competition, nothing to write home about. So it's not something I'm going to jump up and down and say it's a huge advantage recharge-wise on the S24 Ultra. However, if that's a big deal for you, a little faster over here. But battery life, really no issues between these two devices. You're going to love the entire well, full day battery without much issue. Camera. Okay. We'll throw up the shots. This is after the camera update on the S24 Ultra. Okay. So that camera fix. I noticed that Samsung kind of went back to the saturated stuff. I was not noticing that as much before. It's kind of like they, they've returned to the saturated image and they've dialed down that kind of blowout that they were doing. They were kind of doing, they, they copied, not copied, they followed a lot of the stuff software-wise, it seems, this year that Apple was doing. The always-on display, uh, the way they handled the software and kind of the updates, the uh, camera, whereas the, the main factor seemed to be brightness. You take an image and instantly try to blow it out as much as possible. That seems to be turned down. There's not as much as that anymore. They're not really blowing out the images on the S24 Ultra as much as they had been before the update, but the saturation's back. So you got to make a decision. Do you like that or not? Both are quality images. Sets the mood a little bit better over here. It's still sharp. It's still clear. It's still representative. But as far as the raw image is concerned, if you're somebody who puts these in a software program, if you're somebody who is an artist, if you're somebody who the color accuracy is absolutely the, the, the main thing that you're looking for in a camera, you want detail, you want color accuracy, and you'll do the rest in Lightroom then you're going to want a Pixel 8 Pro. I, th I still think that's the best. Video is going to be a wash to me. If you're a big nut on video, then buy an iPhone. But the, um, for the rest of it, as far as the camera accuracy over here, tone, mood, a little bit of more saturated color on the S24 Ultra side, but not as bright as it was pre-update. So lots to like on both of these. Like I said, was not expecting it to be close. If you could get one of these for about 800 bucks, 900 bucks, then I do think that you should pick one up over an S24 Ultra, especially if you don't need the S Pen, especially if you're not married to One UI. Both are doing well software side. That might come down to preference. There's a lot of things here that you're going to like about both of these, but it seems almost it, it seems ridiculous that a few years ago uh, we're, we are where we are now. We're, the thinking back to the Pixel 6, Pixel 5, Pixel 4 XL software on Android 12, all the headaches that Google's caused over the years on the Pixel devices to be the, to the point where I can honestly sit here as somebody who absolutely lashed out at Google, I don't know how many times, to say that this is probably all things being equal. If I didn't do this, review phones, write about phones, all the rest of it, I would probably still have the Pixel 8 Pro in my pocket. And that is saying quite a lot. If you've made it this far, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Until next time, have that Steve-licious day.